Welcome to Dr. Sam's Anatomy Classes. This is an OSPI on neck anatomy. Next you will be seeing a slide, an animated slide with a question attached. You will be given 30 seconds to read and answer the question. Be prepared. Which muscle is causing this action at neck and of which side? And also tell the nerve supply of this muscle. So the answer is that this muscle is left sternocleidomastoid. The nerve supply is by spinal accessory nerve, that is the spinal portion of the 11th cranial nerve, as well as the proprioceptive sensations from this muscle is being carried by the ventral rami of C2, C3 cervical nerves mainly. Okay, now let's revise about the important facts about this muscle because I want to make you prepare for all important MCQs that can be covered on this muscle. So here you're seeing is a sternocleidomastoid of right side. So only one sided diagram is shown here. And you can see that this muscle is one of the uh, superficial muscles of the neck. Here you're seeing is the origin of this muscle. This is the sternal head of sternocleidomastoid which is a tendinous head and it arises from the suprolateral portion of the anterior surface of manubrium sterni. This is a tendinous head and this is the muscular head or you can say muscular tendinous head because much of it is fleshy and this arises from the medial uh, one third or medial half of the superior surface of the clavicle and this musculotendinous head it ascends up and below to the mid of the neck it merges with the straight head on its posterior surface then this muscle reaches up to the apex of this mastoid process which is a bony prominence behind the pinna or behind the external auditory meatus and onto the apex of this mastoid process on the lateral margin and reaching up to the upper border of the mastoid process. Its insertion is through a big tendon on the mastoid but when it reaches beyond and it also inserts on the superior nuchal line and that is in the form of aponeurotic expansion, thinned out tendon. And that is like you can say half of the lateral or little one third of the superior nuchal line. Now the nerve supply of this muscle. This muscle is innovated by this nerve. This nerve you are seeing is running like this. And this nerve is spinal accessory nerve. So spinal accessory nerve innovates this muscle on its deeper surface. Then as I told you proprioceptive sensations are being carried by branches from the ventral primary rami of C2 and C3 cervical nerves mainly. Okay so that was about the nerve supply then let's talk about the blood supply. So for your convenience of study, this blood supply, because there were questions asked earlier, so we divide this into three parts, upper part, middle part and a lower part. So this way you can remember blood supply in upper one third is by this artery with its two branches.
so this is about the blood supply of this muscle remember i have made this mnemonic for you so it, the mnemonic is o s s and that is os os you must have heard many times so os is an opening of the uterus os external os internal os right to it to the cervix right so remember in the upper portion there are like two branches from occipital artery perfuse the upper one third of the sternocleidomastoid then middle one third is perfused by branches from superior thyroid artery while the lower one third is perfused by suprascapular artery so this is how you should remember the blood supply of this muscle now talking about the action of sternocleidomastoid so first we'll talk about the unilateral contraction of this muscle in this diagram you will see that when this muscle contracts unilaterally it actually can perform two actions one is like it can simply tilt the neck and bring your head closer to the shoulder of the same side that is simply called uh, tilting of the head in the same direction where the muscle is contracting and this action it will also be assisted by upper fibers of trapezius then the other action is like when this unilateral sternal glomestoid contracts it can tilt your neck it can twist your neck such that your chin or your face faces to the opposite direction so remember the two unilateral actions of this muscle sternocleidomastoid then bilateral actions when the two muscles contract together so remember that this muscle is of cosmetic in, uh, importance cosmetic significance uh, because it's like a v-shaped muscle found in the front of the neck right it also is a beauty muscle so when like you know the two muscles contract together uh, in your regular daily life you must think about when you are eating like when you're eating with a spoon you have to bring your head in front like forward and in that pole, that way you are actually contracting both your sternocleidomastoid to eat so for bringing your head forward is actually forward tilting your spine cervical spine so this is one action and that is protrusion of the head forward and this action you can also remember like when you are lying down on a pillow with your head on the pillow and you are raising your head up from the pillow there also you again perform the same action where you contract both your sternocleidomastoid to bring your head forward and in doing so you are actually flexing your cervical spine so this you can uh, say for protrusion of the head you can also say it's flexion of the neck now think about other action if you are looking up towards the sky right and then at time at that time if you find that the sternal trimestoid both the sides bilaterally if it contracts it is actually also extending the head and there will be folds created in your nuchal area the back of neck because it's now extending the neck as well to look upward it can also cause extension of your head and here you seeing like a person is raising his head above the pillow so there it is causing flexion at the cervical region right so it can also cause flexion of head flexion of cervical region extension of actually remember forced full flexion if it's like you know asked forced full flexion of the cervical spine against resistance then there are actually prevertebral muscles and the you know longus services also they also come into play and in extension of course there are other muscles also involved you know those rectus capitis posterior and all because you know mainly extension happens at this atlanto occipital joint but if it's like in an mcq form and they write 
about the actions of sternocleidomastoid extension of head then it is not wrong so both flexion of neck extension of head forward protrusion of the head these are all bilateral actions of sternocleidomastoid and the another one is like the reverse action of bilateral contraction of sternocleidomastoid is when when you fix your head and then you inhale forceful inhalation deep inhalation in that way is the site of origin where you know this clavicular and this manubrial head now because we are talking is about the manubrial head which is in the longitudinal axis of this muscle that is a tendinous head. So elevating the sternum is also a part of increasing the chest volume. So it also acts as an accessory muscle for inspiration. Got it?